to be or not to be Speaker of the House, to be it today, or tomorrow night, or next week, or not at all. That was doubtless the question gnawing at Kevin McCarthy's mind this week as the Republican Party he worked so hard to woo denied him the Speaker's chair he believed he'd earned again and again and again. For eight terms, he'd waited, dutifully crafting a script that would allow him to seize power over the lower chamber, only for a rebellious band of Republicans to conveniently forget the lines he'd asked them to memorize. The performance turned chaotic humiliating, positively Elizabethan. And that was just Act 1. So often in the universe of official Washington's backroom deals and slippery allegiances, fair is foul, and foul is fair. But the inter-party drama that unfolded here this week was near without precedent in modern history, a speaker election had not stretched on for this many ballots since 1859, when the nation careened into a civil war. To make sense of the nonsensical, Washington's chattering class, not to mention the thousands of Americans who turned to C-SPAN to follow the tragedy on the hill, found themselves falling back on William Shakespeare's timeless works. If I were McCarthy, tweeted Robin Young, the co-host of NPR's. Added Ruth Marcus of the Washington Post, Macbeth must kill and keep killing to slake his ambition. McCarthy must concede and concede even more to slake his own. Like the Scottish protagonist, McCarthy's preferred method of consolidating power was to keep the characters in his caucus happy. He did that by bowing to the pressures of its most boisterous members, even if their demands weren't exactly in the best interest of the party, or the country. Other Shakespearean parallels abound. Although Young and Marcus opted for Macbeth, it was also hard not to think of Julius Caesar, Shakespeare's recounting of the most famous betrayal of all time. We watched as the same 20 legislators, later down to six and then just one, stabbed a stoic McCarthy on the House floor, consumed by the belief that a protracted, four-day vote was the only possible way to prevent the 57-year-old GOP leader from becoming a tyrant. We wondered whether a trusted right-hand man like Steve Scalise would suddenly provide a made-for-theater at two, brute, moment, announcing his own bid for the speakership. <laughs>